So I'm the uh, division director of the Astronomical Sciences Division at the National Science Foundation. Uh, and LSST, as everybody here knows, and if you don't know, you're about to find out, it's a fantastic program. It's a federal project um, that began uh, with a private donation, actually, and we will honor that private donation. But we are here today to fo focus on the major renaming of the facility after a pioneering astronomer um, that is intimately tied to one of the key focus science areas for, for this project. And so I'm pleased, very pleased, beyond how much you all know and may recognize to today officially rename the LSST Observatory as the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. <laughs> So because we know you're all in love with the four <laughs> letters LSST, we figured out a way to preserve that. So the prime program uh, of the Vera C. Rubin Observatory for the first roughly 10 years uh, after we finish the construction and commissioning phase will be called from here on forward the Legacy Survey of Space Time. So we've preserved LSST. And as I mentioned before, there was a, a the thing that kicked this all off was a, pri was a private donation that went through the LSST Corporation many, many years ago, before the federal government was involved, uh, and that was by Charles Simone. And so we will rename the telescope the Simone Survey Telescope. Now the focus of this, is our, of this announcement is on Vera C. Rubin and the renaming of that in the uh, rename, in renaming of the observatory. In the near future, we will have a separate announcement uh, about the Simone Survey Telescope, and there'll be a little more added to that, which I will not talk about. I'll tease it. Uh, <laughs> but within a, f a few months in the near future, we'll make an announcement of uh, re-announce the Simone Survey Telescope and add a little bit to that, which will be of great interest to everybody in the scientific community. Um, so I mentioned this is a federal project. The next thing we're going to do is Kathy Turner. This is a federal project, uh, an agreement and partnership between the National Science Foundation, who's responsible for building everything but the camera. So the camera during the construction phase is built by DOE, and, and Kathy Turner here will get up and talk to us in a few seconds a little bit about Vera Rubin. Um, but let me just close saying that federal project, um, camera, DOE, everything else, uh, NSF, and then as we move forward into the operations phase, it will be roughly an equal partnership uh, in the operations phase is our plan between NSF and DOE. So Kathy, if you could get up and say a few words about Vera, we'd appreciate it, thanks. <coughs> Okay, hello everybody. Um, so as you know, representative of DOE, um, we're honored to partner with NSF on the new Vera C. Rubin Observatory and to provide the camera to carry out the legacy survey of space and time, as Ralph just said. Um, so within the DOE Office of High Energy Physics, two of our primary science drivers are uh, the study of dark matter and dark energy. So it's and it's, this is our reason for being part of the project. And so, you know, though her work was in astronomy, as you know, the search for dark matter is a, a major part of the physics research in the country and, and globally. And so it's particularly fitting that this partnership has come together with being named for, for Dr. Rubin. So we want to recognize, of course, the work of the hundreds of people that have gone into this from, from all different sectors. And it continues to be a joy in, in watching it come together and look forward to uh, this amazing survey, which will start in a few years. But um, speaking as, especially as a woman and a physicist, I feel honored to be part of this project for, for a number of years, many years now. Uh, 
So I remember uh, being a college student and reading with excitement about her work and the details of uh, what led to um, really making the case that there's got to be dark matter in the universe. And, uh, and I'm thinking, yes, science is a field that women have a right to be in and, you know, and a right to pursue. And we don't have to take no for an answer as we're jumping over roadblocks in, in our way. And so that's, you know, she has multiple legacies of, of course, the major science work she does, the major discoveries, and also the major legacy of, of paving the way for, for young people and, and especially women in the field. So especially her enthusiasm for the science, she was always so excited about it and uh, continued all through her life. Her dogged determination to be recognized for her work was as really something uh, that stood out to me when I read uh, more of the details about her. And her work in promoting students, and especially in her help, as I say, in paving the way for, as a role model for women in astronomy and in physics and in all areas of science, have made, made this a really fitting tribute. And so with this naming, um, her work and legacy will continue to inspire people of all ages uh, to continue to study science and pr um, pursue their dreams. So um, there is an article coming out in the Sy Symmetry magazine, which has more of a biography of her. I think that may be out soon, in the next day or two. So um, that's something to look up if you want to look up more details about her. But uh, you know, it's really a joy to be here and to, uh, to honor her in this way. Thank you. So thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Kathy. Um, it's a big moment for us, as you can see by the t-shirts we put on. <laughs> um, I, I do want to make a point of clarification, because on this momentous day, we're actually introducing three names. Uh, so you might be a little bit wondering, what are all these names, and how should one use them? Um, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory refers to the summit facility, the offices in La Serena, the offices in Tucson, all of that. For the first 10 years of operation, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory will be fully dedicated to the performance of the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. Okay? So LSST is the project. Viracy Rubin Observatory is the facility. And the Department of Energy has, as Ralph mentioned, developed the LSST camera, which is the DOE contribution for the partnership in the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. Okay? So if you write a paper about LSST and you put a little footnote about what it is, then you should say the NSF Viracy Rubin Observatory will perform the legacy survey of space and time using the LSST, the DOE LSST camera and the Simone survey telescope. <laughs> Everybody got that? Yeah, <laughs> there's a test. You can get a there's second a drink test. if you can get all that right. If you do it wrong, we're gonna put an editorial in nature. <laughs> all right, so we'll all get used to this as we go along. Um, uh, you've heard uh, Kathy's eloquent comments about Vera, uh, who is truly a profound scientist and, and central to LSST science. I don't want to lose the fact that uh, Charles Simone made a, a seminal contribution to LSST, and as Ralph indicated, there's more to come there, which will be of particular interest to you, which we'll announce separately. But it's important that we highlight all of these. And just to remind you that the actual legacy survey of space and time which is a 10-year experiment, uh, is a joint program between NSF and DOE. So both agencies are seminal to that. What happens after 10 years, we'll see. Uh, if the science remains of interest to the Department of Energy, there might be a continuation, or it might be that it becomes a, a uniquely NSF facility. But that's something we'll determine in the future. OK? Any questions about all this? <laughs> Everybody happy? Okay, great. 
So that, this was a preamble to this open house session. Uh, we have some talks at this session that will apprise you of what's been happening uh, lately on LSST. So we're going to start with Victor Krabendam, who's the project manager for LSST. And he will give you a talk on the uh, construction status. Victor? 